Hi guys and welcome to the Happy Artichoke. My name is Rachel and today we're going to talk about recovery after thyroid surgery. So today I am post-op day 9. I have come a long way. I really could tell on post-op day 6 that I was starting to feel a little bit more like myself. The first couple days after surgery, I had a lot of mobility issues um, in my neck, which I just really was a lot more hunched. Um, you can tell even right now, I'm not doing a ton of moving around. I was so thankful that even in the hospital, I was able to sleep on my side. The other thing I've done is if I'm on the couch, I just have like six pillows lined up so I can sit pretty straight up and partly that just makes me feel like I can rest while I'm being kind of active in the room. I just feel like it's a better way for me to protect this incision. In terms of pain management, I was sent home with Motrin and Tylenol, and those are meds that I took every four hours. So every four hours I would take two Motrin, and then I'd wait four hours and I'd take two Tylenol. And I did that even at nighttime. I would let myself sleep, but if I woke up, I would take my next dose of pain medications around like two or three in the morning. And then the other thing that's been helping a lot is ice packs. So I just put like a pack of peas or a pack of mixed vegetables frozen on my neck for 15 minutes on, 15 minutes off whenever I think of it. And that's helped I think a lot with swelling and it also just helps with pain management in general. The third thing that has helped a lot is throat lozenges. And I haven't really needed a ton of them after the first couple days of surgery, but throat lozenges at nighttime when I was going to sleep helped a lot as well as throat spray. So we talked about the pain pills. The other thing that I'm taking is calcium and calcitrol. And those are two drugs, uh, supplements, that both improve or increase your calcium intake. They just have different mechanisms of action. I was prescribed oyster shell calcium, the supplement, three times a day with food and also calcitrol twice a day. Now I started noticing on post-op day four or so that I was having some tingling on my lips, which I was told to watch for. And then I started developing tingling in my hands, my fingers and my toes. And that is a side effect of having low calcium. So I called my doctor and I was told to in increase my calcium intake. So I took a fourth dose of that calcium supplement and then I was told if that didn't quite do it to take a third dose of calcitrol daily. So that is the regimen I'm on now and it has made a huge, huge difference in my comfort not having that numbness and tingling anymore. It really was driving me crazy. <laughs> I could not rest very well. Having low calcium after a thyroid surgery is really common because there's four parathyroid glands that sit atop of the thyroid. When you have thyroid surgery, the surgeon does everything they can to leave those in. They still get manipulated and they get really cranky because you just pushed them around and moved them around. So it's very common to have some uh, calcium problems after surgery. Hopefully they're not long-term, but those are the drugs that I'm on after surgery. Pain medication, calcium, and calcitrol. So we talked about pain control, we talked about mobility, we talked about sleep. The other thing I wanna say about sleep is just really let yourself sleep as long as you can. I slept, I think, 12 hours that first night, broken up into like three sections, and I napped a lot and it's gonna feel weird, especially if you're used to being super productive and super busy all the time, you're gonna feel like you're wasting your day away, but you're not. Your body is probably still got anesthesia in it. You've still got all these drugs going on. Your body just went through something super traumatic. So just allow yourself to rest a lot. Allow people to help you when they offer. So my husband and my family members did a lot of bringing me things, getting me ice, getting me my meds, um, refilling my water glass, like things that feel really weird, not doing for yourself, but just know that one, your body needs the rest and it's okay that you're not doing those things. And two, the people who love you really want to feel helpful and useful to you. So let them do those things for you. Oh, one of our dogs just ate my husband's wrap he just made for himself. She in the dog house. Okay, what's next? workouts. For two weeks, I can't lift anything more than 10 pounds. And then two weeks after that, no more than 20 pounds. 
I also wasn't able to drive the first week, which mobility wise at the time, it wouldn't have been safe to anyways. Um, you're also not really supposed to drive if you're still taking pain medication. Now granted the pain meds I'm on are not narcotics, so they don't have the same side effects of making you sleepy, but that is something to be mindful of. Today I did drive for the first time. It was about a two minute drive, but still. I think this is just a game of patience. So it's being patient, watching my body. I went with my husband twice so far to watch him do his workouts. I thought it would be weirder not being able to work out and being at the gym, but I think having this incision, as soon as you look at me, you see this incision. So it's kind of like I'm just wearing a sign that says like, I have a reason not to work out right now. I think that helps a little bit. And speaking of this dressing, I did have what's called an island dressing. It's just a bigger dressing that was on top of this. As soon as I got out of surgery and then I was allowed to remove that post-op day two, and then I have all these Steri strips is what they're called. Underneath these Steri strips is just the topical skin adhesive, which is like super glue for your skin. And it should hopefully just leave, um, I don't know how long the scar is. I imagine it's this whole thing, but I, uh, we'll use vitamin E on my scar probably by like six weeks post-surgery and I'll just massage that into the scar to make it less noticeable. I was given the option to have one or two weeks off of work post-surgery. My surgeon recommended taking two weeks if I could get it, which I could. I can't imagine having gone back after just one week. I was not even feeling like myself until post-op day six. So power to you people who can go back after just one week. I think by this time next week, hopefully, I'll have even more mobility. I'll have um, less fatigue in terms of being able to talk for a long period of time. So far, everything's looking really good. I have a post-op appointment um, three weeks after surgery, and that's gonna be a telehealth visit, so it'll just be on the phone. And of course, in the meantime, I'm supposed to watch for signs of infection. I think that's it. I hope this was helpful to you. If you're going to have thyroid surgery, you can watch another video I have about what it was like being in the hospital and I can link to that below. If you have any questions for me or comments, please ask them below or you can always message me by following my social links or hitting the contact me button on the bottom of the browser on my website, happyartichoke.com. I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much for listening.